Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. James Gunn just announced the new Supergirl who's going to appear in Superman Legacy first. Then she'll go on to star in that Supergirl solo movie, Woman of Tomorrow, based on the comic book storyline by Tom King. She's a huge character, and everyone involved, both the actress and James Gunn, talked a lot about her recently, how she's going to be different from previous versions of Supergirl in the movies and the TV versions. So we'll break it all down and what she's going to be doing during Superman Legacy. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. They're going to be filming the movie pretty soon, so we should actually start getting some footage from the movie pretty quickly. I literally just posted another Superman Legacy video for David Cornswood, who had just worn Henry Cavill's Superman suit in his auditions to be the new Superman. As ironic as that is, pretty much all actors auditioning for new Superman movies or other superhero movies in franchises who make it far enough along in the process wind up auditioning in the previous superhero's suit. Henry Cavill, for example, auditioned for Zack Snyder in the Man of Steel movie wearing Christopher Reeve's Superman suit, so it's not quite as weird as it sounds. But the real big news you probably just saw everybody's talking about was James Gunn just announced he'd cast Millie Alcock from House of the Dragon as the new Supergirl of this rebooted DCU movies. Right now, it's just for Superman Legacy. Like, that's why he cast her, because they're getting ready to film with the character. Then she'll be in the Supergirl solo movie, Woman of Tomorrow, but she'll also appear as Supergirl whenever they use the character in other movies and other TV series. One of the big differences with James Gunn's new era of DC movies in the DCU, all the TV shows, is that all the movie actors will also voice their characters in animation and appear on the live action TV shows when they want them to cross over. Really good example of that just happening in the DCEU is on the Peacemaker series where you have Aquaman and The Flash playing their characters again on TV. You're late, you dickheads. Go another fish, asshole. I'm so sick of that rumor. It's not a rumor. Barry. Just imagine more of that happening. There are a couple exceptions to this, like right now there's still multiple versions of Batman, for example. We have Matt Reeves, Robert Pattinson's Batman movies that will last for at least a trilogy, and Matt Reeves is doing some, some Elseworlds Batman TV series for HBO, but that's an exception to the rule, not the rule itself. There is another Superman Elseworlds movie that James Gunn just said is still in development. He didn't sound very happy about it, but I'll mention that at the end of the video. So technically, there's supposed to be multiple versions of Superman, but I'm not sure that that other Superman movie will actually wind up making it to screen. So for now, there's just one version of Superman and one version of Supergirl. Generally, I think that's the way to go. It's the way they're doing it in the Marvel Universe. Naturally, James Gunn, coming from the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, patterning a lot of the way that they structure things in this new DCU, also based on the way that things are being structured in the MCU. No big surprise, you stick with what works. Most of my experience with Millie Alcock has been through the House of the Dragon TV series. She plays the younger version of Rhaenyra during the first half of season one. And as far as I know, the House of the Dragon showrunner said that they don't have any plans to bring back young Rhaenyra or young Allison or the young versions of any of the characters in future episodes. So she's basically done in the Game of Thrones universe and free to do all this DC stuff. James Gunn and everybody associated with the movie, even Millie Alcock herself, issued a couple of statements reacting to the casting news. James Gunn said, Millie is a fantastically talented young actor, and I'm incredibly excited about her being part of the DCU. Yes, I first became aware of her in House of the Dragon, but I was blown away by her varied audition for screen tests for Supergirl. She embodies Kara as envisioned by Tom King, Bilkis Evely, and Anna Nogueira. The reason why James Gunn named them, like Tom King, the other people, is because the new Supergirl solo movie is based on Tom King's Woman of Tomorrow comic book run. One of my favorite comic book series from last year was Tom King's run on Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. And so we're going to turn that into a big science fiction epic film. Now, Superman is a guy who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents. Where Supergirl, in this story, she is a character who was raised on a chunk of Krypton. She watched everybody around her perish in some terrible way. So she's a much more jaded character. Bilquis was the artist on that comic book run who developed the visual style of the character, which they're also using to inform the visual style of the movie. And Anna Nogueira is writing the new Supergirl movie with Tom King. I believe Tom King is writing on it too because James Gunn just featured him with a snapshot of all the architects of these upcoming DC movies and TV shows and he was there. 
So it's not them just borrowing from comic book runs. He has some of the original comic book writers actually working on the movies and TV shows in a bigger way. Tom King was also working on the New Gods and Dark Side movie at DC too before this a couple years ago, but that went away when James Gunn rebooted everything. The funny thing is that right after James Gunn posted his reaction, he also followed up by saying that when he was watching Millie Alcock on House of the Dragon season one, at the time, like this is a couple years ago in 2022 when the show actually aired, he told the co-head of DC Studios, now Peter Safran, the two of them kind of formed the Kevin Feige situation running DC. He told him that Millie Alcock would make a great Supergirl. Basically, she was his first fan cast for the new Supergirl role. Funny that months and months went by, he probably auditioned hundreds of actresses for the role, went through all this different process, only to cast his original fan cast. Millie Alcock herself also issued a statement basically saying, thank you for entrusting me with Kara with this character. So she sounds pretty hyped up. She was literally featured in this viral video of someone going to her house like the day that she actually auditioned for the Supergirl role. So like this video was taken right as she was auditioning and winning the role of Supergirl. Oh, I don't pay rent. I'm staying with my mom. But she pays like a thousand bucks. Here, like on holiday? Yeah. Could I have a tour of yours? Yeah. This feels like a great place to have breakfast. It is. It's a good place to like sit. I like your shoes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the guest room. See, you now the sun. This is like <laughs> family wool. My mom, and she was like 15. I feel like you guys look a lot alike. Do you and your mom look a lot alike? Yeah, I think, well, we are related. So that tends to happen. This is your mom's room. It's so Where'd you steal that? What is it up here? This used to be my room. Feels a little magical, actually. It is a bit magical. One of my first meetings for House of the Dragon and I was here. That's such a crazy coincidence. Like the person that took the video had no idea that she was auditioning for Supergirl at the time. Like it was just some random video that someone was taking for their channel. The other actress she beat out for the role in the end was Meg Donnelly, who at the moment has actually been voicing Supergirl in the Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths movies. Like, I literally just did a trailer video for part two. It's a three-part movie because Crisis is such a big story. They just released part one. She also did her voice during the Legion of Superheroes movie, so she's basically like the Tomorrowverse version of Supergirl. If you watched any of those movies, you have a pretty good idea of what her Supergirl feels and sounds like. A lot of you asking why he didn't just use the Meg Donnelly version, and I think the idea is that the Tom King version of Supergirl and Woman of Tomorrow is just a very different version of the character than this Tomorrowverse version. And according to all of them, Millie Alcock just did the best version of the version of Supergirl that they want in the movies. Like, there are a lot of amazing actresses out there that would make great Supergirls, but not the version of Supergirl, like the tone of Supergirl or what they want the character to be doing that Millie Alcock will be doing. In other two of them, I just feel like Millie Alcock, probably a vastly bigger star, even though in both cases, it's corporate synergy. Like, they were both under contract at Warner Brothers for different types of movies. So even though James Gunn doesn't care about that kind of stuff, like, he's going to cast whoever he thinks is best for the role. The Warner Brothers people, like the corporate business suits, love that kind of stuff. We just had this huge contract with you for House of the Dragon. It's going to be so much easier for us to make a contract with you for the DC movies now. James Gunn said she's going to be a critical part of the plot in Superman Legacy, but here's the thing. During Superman Legacy, he's going to be reckoning more with his origin story as a son of Krypton, as an alien, and as a human of Earth. So he's grown up on Earth without knowing anything about his Kryptonian heritage for the most part. He has the Fortress of Solitude, so I'm guessing that Supergirl is featured when he's looking at things inside the Fortress of Solitude, learning about Krypton's history. If she's actually featured being on Earth with Superman, I think that's not till like the very end of the movie or maybe like a post credit scene or something like that. The major difference between her new Supergirl and the previous versions that we've seen on screen, it sounds like based on the Tom King run, this Supergirl will be a way darker, way moodier kind of characterization than the bubbly, sweet, happy version from say like the DC TV Supergirl played by Melissa Benoist. I know a lot of you are also asking about Sasha Kaye's Supergirl from the Flash movie. If they wanted a darker and more hardcore Supergirl, why didn't they just bring her back? Because that's basically who her Supergirl was. I think the easy answer to that is that James Gunn wanted a total reboot of all the major characters. The only actors that are supposed to be surviving the DC reboot and coming back as their characters are a few minor characters or secondary characters that might be a little bit larger but are so amazing as the characters you can't picture anyone else like his Amanda Waller from the Suicide Squad movie and John Cena's Peacemaker for instance is coming back most of the Peacemaker actors but all the Justice League characters and associated major superheroes all being recast but I do think Sasha Kaye did a great job with Supergirl despite only being a smaller part of the Flash movie 
One of the other major differences too is that Tom King's version of Supergirl has a very, very different origin story. There's no crazy multiverse subplot like there was in the Flash movie. And one of the ironic things is that Sasha Kaye actually said that the Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow comic book run that Tom King did was one of her favorite comic book runs. Like she talked about it at length during the Flash press tour. Um, in Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow, we get to see uh, this 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 character grieve. You know, like she's going, she's she's there's a lot of grief because she's kind of processing, and it starts with you know her humanity as well, which I I love about her. She's not like your typical hero. She's really just like trying to process like you and me on a day to day. Like, gosh, she should probably get therapy as well. You know, she's she's just trying to figure things out, which is is incredible um but i just i hope to dis i want i want people to see all of her i think that comic book is is really really cool because you do experience her grief and and kind of like her motherly instinct in in a sense and her protectiveness and her care and um i have a great dane i love my great dane uh deeply and her relationship with her dog is is is, is really beautiful the irony is not lost on us that she loves Tom King but was not right for that version of Supergirl in the movie based on that story. But when James Gunn is talking about it, he calls it more of a sci-fi movie. The whole idea is that it's Supergirl going to the ends of the universe to save an alien girl. So it's more of a space-based movie. It features Crypto the Superdog. They're also doing Crypto in the Superman Legacy movie too. So we're finally getting a version of Crypto in the movies. But because James Gunn has started ramping up on production of Superman Legacy, they'll be filming really soon. We should get some actual footage from the movie pretty quickly. So whatever winds up releasing, of course I will do videos for it. Click here for my brand new Deadpool 3 teaser and click here for that other new Superman Legacy video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.